All right, today we are diving deep into something that feels almost radical in this day and age, a project that's all about reclaiming your digital privacy. We're talking about the Graphene OS project. But before we get into the nuts and bolts, let's just start with the huge question that's probably on your mind. Is it even possible, really, to own a smartphone that isn't constantly tracking you, listening, and reporting back to someone? It's a massive question, I know, but stick with me because by the end of this, you are gonna have a very clear answer. Okay, so here's how we're gonna break it all down. First, we'll look at the secret life of your phone. Then we'll get into what a hardened operating system even is. After that, we're going deep inside Graphene OS itself. We'll talk about the big catch, why it only runs on Pixel phones. Then we'll put it in the ring for a security showdown with the competition. And finally, we'll deliver the privacy verdict. Let's get into it. So let's kick things off with part one what your phone is really doing behind the scenes, and the privacy problem that we're all facing, whether we know it or not. You know, the hard truth about the smartphone in your pocket, whether it's running standard Android or iOS, is that it was designed from the ground up to collect data. Everything from where you go, to what apps you use, to how long you use them. All of that is being gathered, crunched, and turned into a product. In this model, you're not really the customer. Your personal information is the actual product being sold. And that creates this huge conflict of interest between what the company wants and what you want for your own privacy. So if that's the disease, what's the cure? Well, that brings us to section two and this really interesting concept, the hardened operating system. So what on earth is a hardened OS? Well, first off, it is not just some privacy app you download or a few settings you flip. No, no. This is a mobile operating system that has been completely torn down and rebuilt from its very core, from the kernel all the way out with one single-minded purpose, to maximize security and privacy by hunting down and sealing off every possible vulnerability. It's a total paradigm shift away from data collection and completely towards protecting you, the user. And you can think of these principles as building a digital fortress around your data. Reinforce sandboxing, that's like putting every single app into its own solitary confinement cell. It can't talk to or mess with any other app. Enhanced network isolation is like bricking up all the secret tunnels that apps could use to phone home without your permission. Strict permissions, that means the warden and the warden is you, has to personally approve every single request for an app to use the microphone or the camera or your location. And maybe the biggest one of all, ripping out all those deep level Google services, that's like cutting the main communication line that sends intelligence reports back to headquarters. It is a total lockdown and you're the one holding all the keys. All right, so that's the theory. Now let's pop the hood and see how this is actually done in practice. Welcome to section three, inside Graphene OS. So Graphene OS takes all those principles we just talked about and cranks them up to 11. And yeah, we're gonna get a little technical here, but this is the really cool part. It uses something called a hardened memory allocator or hardened malloc. What this does is it makes memory corruption attacks, which are one of the most powerful tools in a hacker's toolkit, incredibly difficult to pull off. It's like trying to hit a moving target in the dark. The system kernel also uses tricks like address space layout randomization, which is a fancy way of saying it's constantly shuffling the system's internal layout, again, making it a nightmare for an attacker to land an exploit. Even the thing that draws web pages on your screen is a custom-built hardened browser called Vanadium. But here's the genius move. If you need to, you can install Google Play services, but it doesn't get special privileges. It runs in a normal sandbox, just like any other app. You get the app compatibility you need without giving away the keys to the kingdom. Now here is the secret sauce. This is what makes it all work. All of that incredible software security doesn't just exist on its own. It is specifically built to work hand in glove with dedicated security hardware, like the Titan M chip you find inside Google's Pixel phones. This little chip acts as a physical anchor for all the software security and enforces things like verified boot, which means every time you turn on your phone, the hardware physically checks to make sure the software hasn't been tampered with. This synergy, this link between the hardware and the software is what gives Graphene OS its incredible strength. And that powerful link between the hardware and software leads us right into our next section, the pixel only catch. Let's talk about the practical side of all this. Because of that deep, deep integration with the security hardware, Graphene OS is only officially supported on a very specific list of devices, Google's own Pixel phones. We're talking about the recent Pixel 6, 7, and 8 series, the upcoming 9 series, and even the Pixel Fold and Tablet. Now, it's really important to understand this isn't a bug, it's a feature. The developers behind the project are laser-focused. They will only target devices that meet their incredibly high standards for hardware security. 
because that's the only way they can guarantee that the software's promises are actually being enforced by the physical chip. Okay, so how do you get it on one of these phones? Well, it's a pretty straightforward process. You need a compatible Pixel, and it has to be carrier unlocked. That's key. Then you back up everything, of course. You dive into the developer settings to enable something called OEM unlocking. From there, the official web installer actually walks you through most of the process. But the final step, step five, is the most crucial one of all. You have to relock the bootloader. This is what restores the phone's maximum security, turning verified boot back on and ensuring the operating system is pristine. This step is what separates Graphene OS from pretty much every other custom ROM out there. So really, it all boils down to this trade-off. What do you get? You get absolutely top-tier, unmatched security and privacy. You get security updates faster than almost anyone else, you get a completely clean system with zero bloatware, and you have total control over your device. What's the catch? Well, you're locked into using specific Google Pixel hardware. Some apps that are deeply tied into Google services like Google Pay, for example, might not work. And yes, you do have to be comfortable enough to go through that technical installation process yourself. And that trade-off gets even sharper when you put Graphene OS in the ring against the operating systems that most of us use every single day. Let's head into the security showdown. This table just lays it all out there. You can see the completely different philosophies at play. Graphene OS is the clear outlier, hitting very high for both security and privacy, because that is its entire reason for existing. Standard Android? Its security can be pretty good, but it really depends on the phone maker, and its privacy is fundamentally low, because its business model is based on your data. iOS is very secure, for sure, thanks to Apple's locked-down ecosystem, and its privacy policies are good, but you're still living inside a giant corporate world. You can see right here that Graphene OS makes a very conscious choice to sacrifice that universal out-of-the-box convenience to absolutely max out security and privacy in a way that no mainstream company ever would. So all of this brings us to the final critical section, the privacy verdict. After looking at all of this, is Graphene OS actually the right choice for you? Well, first, you have to understand who's making this. Graphene OS is not a company, it's a nonprofit, independent, open source project. It's run by a small, incredibly focused team of developers, and it's funded 100% by donations from people who use and believe in it. And that's absolutely key to its integrity. It has no other motive than protecting its users. But that also means you have to adjust your mindset. You aren't a customer. There's no 1-800 number to call for support. You're part of a community of users and developers all working on this together. And that really gets to the core philosophy of the whole project. I think it can be summed up perfectly with this idea. Graphene OS offers a path to digital sovereignty, but it's a path you have to walk yourself. It gives you the tools you need for a level of digital freedom and security that is just not available anywhere else, but it demands that you take personal responsibility. It requires you to be willing to learn and to make an active, conscious choice to put your privacy ahead of pure convenience. And that brings us all the way back to that first big question I asked at the very beginning. Is it possible to own a smartphone that doesn't spy on you? The answer, after everything we've seen, is a clear and absolute yes. It is possible, but it's not something you can just go pick up at a store. It requires a deliberate choice to combine the right hardware, a compatible Google Pixel, with the right software, Graphene OS, and, probably most important of all, the right mindset. So I'll just leave you with this one last thought to chew on. As our digital and physical worlds become more and more connected, the value of our private data is only going to go up. And so the real question you have to ask yourself is this, how much of that seamless, easy convenience are you willing to trade for real, verifiable, true digital privacy? With projects like Graphene OS, at least now, that choice is finally yours to make.